in the courtroom, a poor girl, with her head bowed in silence, bore the blame and abuse alone. Meanwhile, even though all the evidence showed that she was not the murderer, the jury and the judge decided that she was the murderer and should be sentenced to death immediately. A few days ago, the swamp outside the town suddenly appeared a body identified as the town resident Chase. A preliminary police investigation found no footprints around the body, but forensics found some red wool fibers on his jacket, and police believe Chase may have been pushed from a high tower to his death. And the girl that lives alone in this piece of swamp is called by everybody namely Swamp Girl Gia became everybody's suspect object immediately. Hello, everyone. Today, Josie is going to share with you a love suspense film, Swamp Girl, which is released in 2022. The movie is adapted from the global phenomenon best-selling novel, Where the Crawdads Sing, which has sold 30 million copies worldwide. Those who like mind-twisting dramas should not be missed. Josie's channel focuses to discovering and introducing niche movies dedicated to the unique you. So please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any updates. The dead man, Chase, grew up rich, had a beautiful fiancé, and was the best quarterback in town for years. Chase fell to his death from a fire tower in the swamp without any reason. The police suspected that he was pushed from a height, so they determined the case as a homicide and began to investigate suspicious people nearby. The girl Gia, who lives alone in the deep swamp, is a major suspect. Coincidentally, the police found some red fibers on victim Chase, and when they searched Gia's cabin by the marsh, they found a red wool hat, which makes her even more certain as a suspect. Gia found the police on her way home. She tried to run away, but was found by the police. She tried to dive to avoid the police arrest, but eventually was caught. In the detention center, helpless Gia is facing the embarrassing situation of no defense, waiting for her maybe life imprisonment or death. Fortunately, there is a kind lawyer named Tom in the town. He believes that the girl is not the murderer and is willing to defend her free. In order to dispel the prejudice that the jury and the townspeople had long held against Gia, Tom gave her a book to encourage her to stand up and defend herself. Finally, Gia decided not to be timid anymore. She stood in the court in the presence of everyone in her life. It turns out that she once had a happy family with a loving mother and loving siblings, but everything changed because of her violent father. Because of domestic violence, her mother left five children run away from home, brothers and sisters also gone, and only Gia left with her father in order to stay alive and try to hide from violent father. Gia was hiding in the swamp with unlimited childlike innocence to explore the unknown world, seeking solace. That day she met a boy in the swamp Tate became her first friend, who gave Gia the courage to go on living, make her more confident and strong. One day, Gia was so hungry that she summoned up the courage to tell her father. Unexpectedly, he took Gia to the shop in the small town for the first time. The owner looked at the little girl who had no shoes and told Gia that she must go to school. She also put a lollipop when she bring groceries for Gia, as if it planted a hope in Gia's heart. She wanted to go to school, but the reaction of her peers made Gia shrink. Just as she threw down her shield and arms, lawyer Tom stopped her. She told Gia that everyone has the right to go to school. However, ridicule and abuse injured Gia, who finally gave up the extravagant hope to go to school. After that, Gia never went to school again, and Dad was nice to her for a while until he got a letter from her mother. He burned everything she left behind and left home too. Everyone left, and Gia was left to fend for herself. She learned from her father, collecting oysters and selling them in the town grocery store for a small income. The owner's wife, a devout believer, felt that the little girl was too poor. She made shoes for her, sometimes taught her how to read, and gave old clothes to her, silently helping the little girl to survive. Day by day, Gia struggled to grow up. She found that a feather often appeared on a tree stump in the swamp. She used this unique way to communicate with another stranger until one day when she came to the stump again, the stranger shows up. He turned out to be his old childhood friend Tate. Tate and she shared a love of the swamp and its creatures. Gia missed many notes that Tate used to leave for her because she did not know how Tor read. 
Tate wanted to be friends with Gia, and he decided to teach her to read. Starting with the most basic words, Gia had amazing talent and soon opened a new world with knowledge. Gradually, she loves reading and writing, and their friendship deepened over time. The appearance of Tate makes Gia lay down her guard, forget the pain of abandonment, no longer afraid of darkness and loneliness. Rumors of Tate's frequent visits to the swamp soon spread throughout the town. In the face of everyone's doubts, Tate's father did not stop Tate, just told him not to forget his dream of going to college. But the town's social services officials, they wanted to take her to a dormitory. She didn't want to be taken away, so she and Tate ran into the woods and hid. Childhood sweethearts in this familiar swamp forest ushered in the bud of love. They kissed amid the falling leaves and watched the white seabirds at the edge of the wetland. Tate cherished Gia very much. He had been adhering to the bottom line of love to protect Gia. Soon after, Tate was admitted to the university of his dreams. After the ecstasy was followed by the pain of separation, Tate promised Gia that he would come back after graduation. Before he left, he left a list of publishers for Gia, who he knew was so talented that his drawings and observations of wetland life could be published in a book that, if successful, would save her from digging mussels for a living. With Tate gone, Gia focused all her energy on the drawing book. Gia looked forward to Tate's holiday every day, and when it was time she put on her best clothes and waited on the beach with her picture book, but Tate did not come back. Gia fell into the darkness of being abandoned again in public. She tore up the manuscript, despair, and people around her all have abandoned her. Only the swamp is forever home. A few years passed. With the increase of visitors, the developer also made up the idea of the swamp to build a resort, which let Gia panic. The owner told Gia to keep her house, must provide a contract or title deeds. So she immediately went to the Bureau of Land Management to check the title of her cabin. The cabin in the swamp was purchased by her grandfather and now belongs to Gia, but only after paying $800 in taxes. It was a figure Gia could not afford, and thinking of the publisher's lists that Tate had left her, she sent away the years of work giving it a try. This brings her into contact with rich boy Chase, who does not share the same interests with Gia as Tate. But elegant Botchen, dynamic wooing in turn swept her off her feet. Chase took Gia to the fire tower, gave her a splendid view of the whole swamp which made Gia very moved, and he also asked Gia to show him her cabin. Unlike Tate, Chase and Gia have nothing in common, and Gia doesn't care how Chase feels about her. His presence is enough to stop her from being lonely, so that they quickly settle in a relationship. At this point, Gia's manuscript also received a response from the publisher. They love her work and ready to publish them as soon as possible. Gia can't wait to tell the good news to Chase. They lit a bonfire in the seaside to celebrate. Chase promises to marry Gia and also invited her for a trip at another city. In two days' journey, they have sexual relations in a hotel. Gia puts a shell necklace on Chase's neck. They fell into a sweet and hot love. Tate, however, returns at this time, sees Gia hang over with Chase, leaves in silence. The next day, Tate overhear Chase bragging to her friends that he has conquered the Swamp Girl. Angry at being played and insulted by Gia, Tate wrestles with Chase, and Chase yanks Tate's woolen hat, which the police later find in Gia's house. That night, Tate finds Gia and warned that Chase wasn't good. Over the years, Tate can hardly forget Gia. She is still his love and deep heart, but Gia refused to forgive his abandonment. Next morning, Gia went to town to find Chase. He is talking with his friends together, and a girl standing beside him who took Chase's arm said she is Chase's fiancée. Gia finally understands she was cheated, heartbroken run back to the cabin to hide. Thanks to the successful publication of her book, Gia used the proceeds to pay the property tax and get her cabin back, then renovate the whole house and decorate it by purchasing a lot of beautiful furniture. Her elder brother who leave home for many years also see Gia's book, went back and surprisingly found his sister Gia still live here. Her brother told Gia that their mother had died, who had sent their father a letter, asked if she could bring all the kids with her, but their father refused her request and threatened her if she dared to come back, he will kill her. 
In order to save her kids, she struggled to save money all these years to pay a lawyer, but unfortunately she contracted leukemia and passed away soon after. After listening to her brother's story, Gia finally puts down the resentment in her heart. However, Chase did not want to let go of Gia. He did not have the courage to refuse the family arrangement of marriage, but not willing to give up Gia, he asked Gia go back to him, as she is not willing to, Chase uses violence against her. Gia picked up a rock and threw it at Chase, venting her anger at him and warning him that he would kill him if he bothered her again. This scene was overheard by a fisherman, who stood up in court and accused Gia saying that she was going to kill Chase, but he did not tell the truth about what happened. Gia finally felt her mother's fear, which also drove her to escape from the swamp. In the following days, Gia was afraid to go home, often hiding in the boat overnight. This day she carefully returned to the cabin, found that the house was trashed by Chase. Gia knew that men's violence will never end. After night, Gia nervous hiding in the grass, ready to give Chase a lesson. It was Tate who encouraged Gia to go to Greenville and discuss her next book publishers and stay away for a few weeks. Before leaving, he gave her red hat to the shivering Gia. The next day, Gia went to the grocery store, looking for the schedule of the bus. The owner saw Gia's injury very worried, advised him to go to the police. But Gia understands that if she wants to go into the police, her story will be spread in the town, which would destroy her reputation. After getting the bus schedule, she put on her best dress and got on the bus to Greenville. The publisher was impressed by her talent and soon recognized her. The next day, when she returned to town, she was arrested for Chase's death. Government lawyer accused Gia of luring Chase to the tower and pushing him to his death. The lawyer presumed that she cleaned up footprints after the crime. In her defense, Tom argued that there was no evidence that Chase's death was a homicide and not an accident, that there were no fingerprints at the open grill on the fire tower. The police filed a written request last July for the tower to be repaired. The final sentence of the request was that the grills were dangerous and would result in death or injury, further proving that Chase's fall from the sky might not be a homicide. The opposing counsel immediately produced the wool hat, whose fibers matched exactly those on the dead man's coat. Tom retorted that there was no way of telling how long the fibers had been on the dead man, and that if anyone had worn the hat regularly, the fibers would have fallen on their hair or clothes. The defendants, Gia and Chase, had known each other for several years and it was not unusual for each other to have fibers on their faces. The opposing counsel then called to Chase's mother, who said Chase had been wearing a shell necklace and had it with him at home for dinner a few hours before he died, but the necklace was not found on the body. If he was not killed by others, why did the necklace go missing? And Chase's mother testified that Gia and Chase were romantically involved. Her son had been broken up with Gia, and Gia's motive was clear. Tom immediately stood up and fought back. The police had searched Gia's house thoroughly, but they could not find the necklace, and most importantly, Gia had no time to commit the crime. On the day of the murder, she left town for Greenville, and the publisher had dinner with her that night. As the trial drew to a close, lawyers on both sides made their final recommendations to the jury. Tom told them that he had lived in the town all his life and that he had heard as many stories as anyone about the Swamp Girl. However, she was just an abandoned child, struggling to survive in the swamp and suffered endless abuse and disgust. The only people in this town who really care about Gia are the grocery store owner's couple and they're in court today. Other people just make her with all kinds of negative labels because she is different, and now this introverted and pathetic girl is sitting in a court of law being wronged. Tom wants the jury to base their judgment on the facts presented in this court, without any of the rumors of the past 25 years, before reaching a verdict. A few hours later, the verdict was handed down, with the jury unanimously finding Gia not guilty of murder, and she was acquitted. She was treated fairly for the first time in this small town. Her heart was finally relieved, and she is able to return to the cabin. During these months, how she longed to return to the swamp, how she wished she could share this pure land with her lover. By this time, Tate had arrived at the cabin, and he had received a bunch of feathers from Gia on the boat. Now that everything was over, Tate would never let Gia go. They intend to spend the rest of their lives in the swamp.
One day, Gia saw her mother coming towards her. She was as happy as a child to see her mother again in her 60s. When Tate returned home, he found that Gia had died, and in the warm company of Tate, she ended a short but happy life. As Tate looks through Gia's old diary, he discovers a key piece of evidence that has been missing since Chase's death. Tate chose to throw the shell into the sea and let all the truth, like footprints on the beach, wash away in the sea again and again without a trace. That's the end of the story. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and follow. Josie will continue to work hard to show you more exciting content.